Hey folks, today I'll be talking about latent skill in video games. This topic came to mind as I started playing StarCraft II. Long ago, I played the Age of Empires series competitively and had some decent success in tournament play. Getting into StarCraft II was a little bit like putting on an old glove. A bunch of skill sets and gameplay habits came rushing back to me. The joy of putting together an army, executing attacks, learning new build orders, and watching competitive play was almost like coming back home. I rose through the ranks quickly, achieving Masters League or top 5% within a few months. This really made me think about how much real-time strategy games have in common. Every game is unique, but most games typically fall into a certain genre and inherit a set of gameplay mechanics and paradigms that are present in other games within that genre. Playing any game within that genre develops a set of common skills that can be applied to other games within that genre. In fact, playing any video game makes it easier to play another one. Even the mechanics of using a controller or a mouse and keyboard can be considered skill sets that carry over from one title to another. The result of developing these common skill sets is a change in mindset when starting a new game. Inevitably, some of the wonder and discovery of playing a new title is viewed through the prism of previous gameplay experiences. This can be a good thing. It's astonishing to me how smoothly StarCraft II plays, largely because of how frequently I compare it to Age of Empires. Everything you could ask for is hotkeyable and efficiently executed with enough practice. The macro mechanics are fluid and intuitive. Select two buildings and try to build two units. The game will automatically queue one unit in each building. Select different types of buildings and you can tab through them with ease. A player only familiar with modern real-time strategy games might consider these features trivial but compared to most previous titles, it's a huge quality of life improvement. Latent skill is part of the prism players view new titles through. StarCraft is considered to be a notoriously hard game, yet I never felt like I had to struggle to play and get better at it. I already knew what I needed to do to improve. Many of the same paradigms, like watching replays or studying build orders, were still present. Many players burn out trying to reach masters, but for me, it was a straightforward, fun, and stress-free process. That said, latent skill is not always a good thing. I can still remember the first few times I built some marines and marauders and marveled at the particle effects and voice acting. Nowadays, all I can focus on is whether my macro is efficient and producing the right composition. The initial joy of just enjoying the game for what it is has been significantly lessened because my competitive instinct, nurtured from years of playing Age of Empires, has overpowered it. Furthermore, it's easy to fall into the trap of overfitting one game onto another when it's not appropriate. One of the principles of StarCraft is getting more ahead, capitalizing on an advantage by, for instance, further expanding your economy or getting more upgrades. This is largely thanks to the strong defender's advantage that makes it easy for a player to overextend and blow their advantage. Age of Empires was different. The defender's advantage was much weaker until the very late game, so players were incentivized to continue attacking when ahead in order to cement a win. I lost numerous games playing too aggressively, thinking the right thing to do when a small advantage is gained is to snowball that into a direct victory. It was only after I watched many professional games did I see the error of my ways. In some ways, this even worked to my advantage. I purchased StarCraft II the day a new expansion pack came out that fundamentally altered many aspects of the game. Viewing the game through the lens of a beginner, many of the new paradigms were obvious to me right from the start. The strength of the Liberator caught my attention before I even got into Gold League, yet numerous professional players spent months playing hot-style StarCraft and refusing to incorporate this incredible unit into their standard compositions. The lens of a beginner is an interesting way to re-examine a game and try to identify things that you might have missed through the prism of an experienced player. One of my initial thoughts about Dark Souls 3 is that the game didn't challenge me the way Dark Souls 2 or Bloodborne did. By the time I was midway through the game, I could count my debts on my fingers. Yet when I watched a new player play through the tutorial for the first time, I had the exact opposite reaction. The second phase of the initial boss is difficult to read for someone who's not familiar with these games. Some of the needed skills, like dropping your shield when possible or baiting specific attacks, seemed too advanced. It made me miss the Asylum and Taurus Demons, simple, straightforward bosses that new players can grind their way through to slowly but surely learn the mechanics. Yorm the Giant also made me think of this, but in reverse. As I whittled him down, I realized I had adopted the perspective of an experienced Souls player happily beating down a slow and predictable boss. 
As easy as it was, it wasn't a compelling experience at all. It was boring. I took a step back to take the time to understand the developer message about Storm Ruler and finish the fight in a much more satisfying way. I'd imagine any new player entering this fight wouldn't have wasted an hour fighting Yorm the standard way. They'd have seen how ineffective standard attacks were and realized the developers wanted them to do something else. I recently started playing Overwatch and it reminded me how great this beginner's lens is. Thinking strategically, playing the right heroes at the right time, recognizing the imbalances in a newly launched title, finding a group of friends to party with, these are all problems experienced players familiar with the title are dealing with. Me? I'm just having fun experimenting with different heroes and playstyles. I pursue the objectives the game gives me because that's what I'm told to do. As a beginner, I have no other prism through which to view the game. I open my loot boxes and examine everything I get, excited about collectibles that others might view as superficial or unnecessary. One of the most impactful but subtle prisms most players employ is the idea that a game is a series of mechanics intended to be exploited and worked around rather than directly engaged with. There's a distinct lack of purpose in many game mechanics. Quick time events were introduced to help novice players, we assume, or lore descriptions were tacked on at the end to avoid having game reviewers mark the game as incomplete. These practices teach us the wrong habits. Too often we fail to take games at face value because we assumed they weren't meant to be taken at face value. We assume the game developer assumed our level of experience with the genre. We assume the intent of the developer instead of trying to understand it. I think this is one of the reasons the Soul series is so appealing to many players, yet still a foreboding challenge for many others. Souls games are designed very intentionally. Difficult sections are preceded by proper forewarning. Hints are given to players paying attention. Item descriptions call out what the player should do next. Every mechanic in the series serves a clear purpose. Yet too many players approach Souls as a simple hack and slash action game, assuming that the same mechanics and playstyle that typically works in the genre will also work here. They assume tertiary elements like item descriptions or item placements were done thoughtlessly, as they are in many other games. Players that do this end up concluding that the game is cheap or unfair, not because they're too inexperienced, but actually because they're so experienced that they've failed to pay attention to the subtle intentions of the development team. They've applied their own lenses to a game that deserves a fresh pair of eyes. This is one of the reasons I'm so glad I got into the Dark Souls series without any idea of what I was getting into. All I knew was that I liked RPGs, and I liked exploring, and that the series had both. I was so unfamiliar with the mechanics of the game that I was forced to look at it from the lens of a beginner, working my way through the tutorial, paying careful attention to developer messages, always assuming that my debts were my own fault, not the fault of the game's design. I inadvertently experienced Souls the way it's meant to be experienced, and I loved every minute of it. I can't help but wonder what kind of impact this had on me as I worked my way through Dark Souls 3. My clearest memory of my first playthrough is, this is too easy. Honestly, I think many other veteran players would agree with me. But that statement fails to capture so much of what is wonderful and amazing about the final entry of the series. The mechanics are tight and fluid, the graphics surreal, the world lovingly crafted. But instead of thinking about that, I'm grumbling that I'm not being challenged. Viewing the game through this lens was somewhat inevitable as a veteran of the series. However, revisiting the game on subsequent playthroughs and being mindful of what I'm thinking about has actually dramatically improved my gameplay experience. I've started taking the game at face value, like a beginner, and enjoying it for what it is. The best thing I did for myself in Dark Souls 3 was to put my latent skill aside. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about helping new players start playing a game we're already familiar with. StarCraft is a good starting point. I'm always confused when I watch a replay from a lower league player who doesn't understand why they lost a game. It seems obvious to me watching their replay that their macro was completely off point that they forgot to get important upgrades, or they simply didn't attack when it was clear they should. When players are given this advice, it seems difficult for them to accept it, almost as if they don't believe it. I've realized that providing adequate context is important for conferring skill from one person to another. For instance, what does it mean to work on your macro? It's really easy to start from the result, building lots of the right kinds of units. I think taking a step back and focusing on the steps to get to that result is really important. Economy is important because it provides resources to build an army. An army helps you defend your base and attack your opponent. 
Having lots of units means you're more likely to win fights and lose fewer units doing so. Having the right kind of units does the same. Doing all this fast is better than doing it slow. Looking at this step-by-step -step process, it's easy to see that getting the economy macro right is a precursor to getting the army macro right. From this point, the player can move on to more advanced ideas, like the optimal number of workers per base or when to expand to a new location. From there, the player will have lots of resources and can focus on spending it on lots of units. Once that's a habit, they can focus on building the right production buildings and the right units in the right order. The lens of a veteran makes it easy to skip these initial steps because they're too obvious. The philosophy and proper mindset of the game has already been internalized. It seems strange to stop building workers after your first base is saturated. It doesn't make any sense, and we avoid doing it, often without thinking or verbalizing it. Going back to first principles can help us to understand the real issues that new players have and correct those first before moving on to more advanced topics. I also think this is useful for improving our own skill level. Veteran players who didn't include liberators in their standard compositions could have gone back to first principles too. Why am I building tanks? What purpose do they serve? Are they more cost efficient and build efficient at completing this task than liberators? As we get better at things, we tend to naturally focus on mechanical improvement rather than taking the time to reflect on our decision making and mindset. Slowing things down from time to time, at least for me, is an incredibly helpful way of correcting bad habits before they become ingrained. Examining the lenses through which we play a game is a fun exercise in self-awareness and a useful way to make gameplay more enjoyable. Latent skill is one of these lenses, but there are plenty of other ones too. I really believe that if we take the time to be more mindful of how we play games, we can come to appreciate and love them even more.